So a lot of you may have seen the latest announcement from Metrica Labs saying new ordinal feature alert with added message signing support for Ledger. And basically what this means is now when you have your assets in Xverse paired with a Ledger hardware wallet, you can now sign to say, hey, I own this asset. So it's a big step forward. And that's kind of what I've been waiting for before I release a video. So let's dig in. We're going to look at installing the Chrome browser extension and actually setting up a new wallet. And then we can go through adding the hardware wallet from there as well. I already have my ledger plugged in, updated. Uh, make sure you do have everything ready to go on that side as well. So first things first, we're going to go to the XFest website. Click download. Download for Chrome. Now mobile will not support ledger. Always make sure you've got the official XFest links that you're using there as well. We're going to add to Chrome. One thing that is recommended is starting from a fresh. Uh, so when we say starting from a fresh, uh, Xverse actually recommends using a brand new ledger. And, and that's because there's, when, when you set up a ledger, if you already had an existing ledger set up, there might be pre-existing Bitcoin accounts on there. And when it imports, sometimes there might be some conflicts there or some assets in there that you, you weren't aware of. And, and, and I suppose the aim for the team is to make sure your assets are as safe as they possibly can be and, and things don't go where they shouldn't. And, at the end of the day, ordinals, um, ordinal theory, ordinal protocol, it's, they're just, they're sats that are moving around. So yeah, Xverse does a really great job at making it easy for people to actually find their ordinals. Um, they separate the Bitcoin payment address, they separate the ordinals as well. Usually you're quite safe, but the best bet is to start afresh with a ledger, uh, if you can. Brilliant. So I've downloaded the Xverse wallet. Let's go Xverse. And we're going to create a wallet. Next, next. Continue. So I'm, I'm going to ignore the backup for now. Um, one point I will make is that this backup is not your ledger wallet. Your ledger already has its own passphrase. So this backup is for the account that we are creating now to be able to connect your hardware wallet. So just something to know there that if you plan on using the non ledger account, non hardware connected account that you'll see in a minute, then you need to back up this passphrase. All right, so now that I have my Xverse account, we can log back in. And what you do is go up to switch account and then connect hardware wallet. Now, stressing, make sure your ledger live is updated. Make sure your ledger itself is updated. Um, sometimes you have issues with signing if it's not updated to the latest version as well. So connect to ledger, get started. Continue. Important, please read. It is not recommended to use Xverse and Ledger Live or other Bitcoin wallets with the same hardware devices could lead to unintentional transfer of ordinals as we were discussing before. You should use a separate device for Xverse and ordinals or set a seed, uh, set a passphrase on your ledger to create a different set of account for Xverse. So they do have detailed instructions about how do they do that as well. So I understand and continue. And I do have my Nano connected already. My Nano Ledger is already uh, already unlocked, so I don't have to worry about that. Okay, so now we have a Bitcoin payment address. Now, the address is generated by the hardware wallet is actually a SegWit address. So notice how it has a Q here. Q is generally associated, well, it is associated with SegWit, native SegWit. And then what you have with your Taproot address is usually a P there. So BC1P. And I just have to go to my device now and approve. Brilliant. And so we have our ordinals address. So there was a payment address before. And now we have our ordinals address. And this is BC1P, which is our taproot address. Now, one thing I will note from that is that you notice that it actually provided us two different addresses. And Xverse and most wallets these days that are ordinal aware don't actually use the Bitcoin that's in your ordinal account to pay for transaction fees. So that's why you have two addresses. So if you're ever sending or receiving, you need to make, sorry, if you're ever sending, you need to make sure you have Bitcoin in your Bitcoin address, which is this, the uh, native SegWit one. Um, and then it receives in the Taproot or sends from the Taproot as well. So, and you'll notice when you complete a transaction with Ledger, it actually has multiple transactions that you have to prove. And that's because it's taking funds from the Bitcoin account to pay for that transaction fee as well. So I thought I'll just point that out. Um, all right, let's approve that on my ledger as well. You can now receive and send Bitcoin idols. So 
if you ignored me talking, let's just call this ledger. Ledger. If you ignored me talking, and I might do the maths. I will do the maths. That's, that's not lie. I'm put on the screen right now. This is how long it would have taken if I hadn't have talked that whole time. All right, so it, it, it's pretty quick, right? So there's nothing stopping you from giving this a go and get going. If you haven't bought a ledger, this is your sign today to go buy a ledger and get going. So if we now go up into Xverse Wallet and you see ledger is at the very top when you go to change accounts. And we have our two address, so Let's view addresses. So as we talked about before, receiving address segwit uh, with the Q and then ordinal address, so Bitcoin receiving and then ordinal receiving is with the P there. But now the thing you've been waiting for, uh, how do we verify with Matrica? All right, so heading back to Matrica and Matrica.io. I've already signed in. This is a little bit of a pro tip for you as well. Always sign in with your Discord first, especially if you're on a mobile device and switching between different apps to verify ETH assets and Bitcoin assets as well. Um, it just causes conflicts if you start signing in with wallets and you have multiple different wallets. So profile. And settings actually, sorry. And we're going to add a wallet, Bitcoin. X first ledger. I've never done this before. This is exciting. And we're going to sign a message. We're already connected, so this shouldn't take long. And I have to review an output on my device. And I've just accepted that on my end. So let's see. Uh, user ID of relation wallet violates not no constraints. All right, that could be that I don't have any assets in there. So um, I'm going to quickly send something from my Sparrow wallet, <laughs> which means I need to connect my other ledger to my Sparrow wallet and send something across and then see what happens. So we're back. I've just sent myself some Bitcoin to, I'll show you here as well. Sent myself some Bitcoin to the main Bitcoin account, and then also sent for myself a badge from the Ordinal Hub. Shout out to the Ordinal Hub team. Um, this is a little badge you can win by attending weekly YouTube videos or purchase on secondary as well. All right, so let's try that again now that we have those assets in the wallets. Add wallets, Bitcoin, Xverse. It's the ledger one there, approve. Sign message, sign. Ledger's already connected. Nice big tick. So what we want to see and then on my ledger now i'm going across to approve and then we need to confirm that transaction as well now you're not actually sending anything and it's just signing for that all right so now i have my wallet linked and if i go back to my profile i'll be able to see my asset there but it is that easy with sparrow it is a little bit harder because you actually have to copy and paste certain content um, if you're interested in using Sparrow or you're already using Sparrow with a native SegWit address, you can't use a Taproot address with Sparrow for signing at this point in time. Um, there was an update recently that was meant to fix that, but it uh, obviously didn't. Um, so if you are interested in using Sparrow, uh, feel free to jump up and I'll put a guide in the top right corner as well to look into that. I'm just going to quickly cover what it looks like in Mempool when you're sending with Ledger as well. Now, it's going to look like this without Ledger, but the thing that you're doing on your Ledger or your hardware wallet, I should say hardware wallet because you can use whatever you want really, but you're signing twice. So when you're going through your Ledger, you need to go, yep, I approve, and then yep, I approve. And the first one is sending your ordinal. So that's the first input, which is your ordinal, and the first output is your ordinal. And the second input, so the second time you sign, is signing for those fees. So when you go to complete a transaction with XFS and Ledger, and it's a little bit different with Sparrow, so watch my Sparrow video if you're interested in that. So when you go to send with X first, just know that signing twice is expected. It will show you the outputs for the transaction each time on your ledger. So if things look a little bit strange or things don't look like they're going to the right addresses, that's when you definitely want to stop and reevaluate what's going on. Thank you. And I'm um, hoping that's given you a bit more confidence to set up a ledger and get going. If it hasn't, this is your sign. Buy a ledger.